nafasi nyingine tena anaweza kunipatia niungane na Mungu wiki nzima kuweza kunilinda mimi na familia yangu na yale yote ambayo nimekufanya Mungu anaweza kunilinda na kuweza kunipatia nafasi nyingine tena for standing before you so that we can be able to learn the word of God be blessed of it na tendele kupata guidance ya Mungu bwana asante sana I want also to thank you for having time to come and worship with us. Come and get blessed to learn something from God because we are at the feet of Jesus Christ. And in every moment and every time, God gives us an opportunity to present ourselves to Him so that we can receive His blessings. Father, bless us. Uh, last week we talked about Jabez. I don't know how many people can remember about Jabez. Do you still remember that gentleman called Jabez? What about him? What about Jabez? Yes. We learned Jabez means pain. The name Jabez means pain. How many people have never gone for pain? Madam, have you ever gone for pain? So, this learning last week helped you. Anybody who has gone through pain, last week's lesson was this for us. Pain, the experience that we have, or lack, or sorrow, you are going through sorrow. We learned about the base last week, and uh, I hope the prayers of Jabez that we had last week of increasing our boundaries of seeking the blessings of God I hope those blessings this week worked in our life the prayer that we had where we prayed against limitation we prayed against curse we prayed that the Lord might come closer to us and we may experience his blessings but as we start Yes, things that come immediately are things that take time for you to be able to receive. You are just to continue pressing on, pressing on, pressing on until you receive the blessing that the Lord has made for us. And my desire in this altar is to teach something that can help you in your life. I don't want just to preach for the sake of preaching. I want to preach something if you put in your life it brings meaning if you put in your life you can say this is God speaking to me uh, we saw in, in, in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 where the Bible says the word of God is life in our high never la mungu in our high na kitu chochote ambacho kina uhai ni kitu ambacho kiko applicable katika maisha yako. Ukipata kitu ambacho kimekufa hakina maana. Lakini ukipata kitu ambacho kina uhai ina maana katika Mkristo. Na ndio maana tunasema kwamba neno hili la Mungu tukijifundisha na tuweze kuimplement, tuweze kutenda vile neno la Mungu linasema. Basi mimi nafurahi kwa sababu hata ukipata mkutano na mtu njiani akikuuliza utaweza kumjibu. So we will take step by step as we learn the word of God. Mungu akitupatia kitu tunajifundisha. We have learned so many things according to our YouTube. There are so many videos that are put there for people to be able to learn about uh, the Bible so that we can implement and have a benefit of learning the Bible. Success, any success in this world is based on this Bible. Everything out of this Bible 
do not go far. That is what's up. So I want to teach what God has given me. The Holy Spirit gives a direction so that we can be able to learn. And today, we want to start a long journey. Okay? We want to start a long journey. I don't know when we shall finish this, but we want to learn the heavenly principles. Principles that we want. Okay? Now we principles that we want. Okay? Now principles that we want. They are based in the book of John, chapter three, verse eight. That verse that you know very well. So one of the principles is based on that verse. Okay, and we want to learn about that principle today. And that principle of John. John is about giving. You want to learn the principle of giving in the kingdom of God. For so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He allowed his son to come down. He gave. And the Bible says the only begotten son, there's only one son. And that is the same that was brought to the earth. So that you and me, we can uh, have eternal life. So today we want to learn the principle of giving. And then we shall go around so that you can be able to understand, so that it can be easy for you to be able to apply the principle of heaven. Once you apply the principle of heaven, there are many things you will be able to access. There are many blessings you will be able to tap. There are many things that probably you are struggling with now. But when you apply that principle, you will find yourself getting what you have been looking for for many years. There are things you have been looking for. There are things you have been praying. There are things you have been desiring in your heart, but you have not seen them up to now. But today, I'm giving you a principle of heaven that will allow you to be able to access what you have been praying for. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. So you have been praying and praying, but you have not been seeing results. But today I'm giving you one of the principles of heaven that will guarantee you blessings. It is like a key. Hallelujah. Uh, there are different keys. All these are keys. But there is a particular key that will open a padlock like this. Here are the many keys. But not all, not all these keys will open this panel. So, a principle is like a key that I'm giving you that will be able to open a specific door of blessings. And as we start. But for us to be able to understand that principle, I want us to, to follow an example of a person in the Bible in 1 Kings. Chapter 17. We follow the example of that gentleman so that we can be able to understand the principle that he applied and where it took him. That is 1 King chapter 17, verses, I believe it's 4. Until verses 12, I want to read up to 16. As surely as 
God, your God lives. She replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar, a little olive oil in a jar. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And he just said to her, Don't be afraid, go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jar of oil will not run dry. Until the day the Lord sends rain on the land, she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jug of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. One has to it. But the storm. The woman, you remember Elijah? Elijah was a prophet of fire, a prophet that was used to be able to condemn Israel to stay without rain for three and a half years. So, what happened? God talked to Elijah and told him, I am sending you to a widow, to a woman. Who is going to feed you? Not that God didn't know that this woman doesn't have anything. God knew, and that's why God sent Elijah to that woman. Praise God. If we start from verse 7, it says, some time later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, that is to Elijah, go at once to the Rafat in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. A widow. I have directed a widow there to supply you with it, food. But this food, this woman, in verse 12, the Bible says, As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Elijah has been directed to a widow who is supposed to supply him with food. And yet this woman doesn't have bread, doesn't have food. Hallelujah. And uh, Elijah, if it was another person, he would have started complaining to God. How could that have brought me to a woman who has nothing? Okay? But we want to see what principle did this woman use for her to be able to access the blessing of the Lord. I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive in a jar. What does this mean? Jar and jar. Hapa kuna unga, dogo, hapa kuna nini, oye. Uh, just a little, kita wako tu. Na, what happens, in most cases, especially zetu, wako na chukuta hatuna chukwati. Tuko na kitu kila wako tu. Ikiwa ni freeze, hasitoshi. Ikiwa ni chakula, you're not giving the best, to your children. 
kama ni nguo leo tutaenda best uko na kitu kidogo kidogo kama huyu mama siza wido wanake amekufa ana msaada wote amebaki na nini na unga kidogo na hiyo unga anaambiwa anaelika nini yeye anasema kwamba na mganga ni few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and do what <laughs> what does he say the principal okay this woman knew what i have is the last meal for me and my just one minute and this she says just a little bit of it bana sasa when we go to the road we don't go because we have a lot we go to the road because we have problems we have uh, shortages we have weaknesses we have something that we are looking for the road and uh, this woman has was to provide food because God has spoken to Elijah his prophet go to this window what has this happened wewe wakati umeona mtu anakuja kwako anakuja na bomba na unajua kabisa hiyo ndio nacho ndio bana sasa mara nyingi what is your attitude <laughs> we don't have money and here is the person who was scared na na kwamba unajua jana nimelala njaa nimeangalia chini ametembea umetoka wapi umetoka mlungu akakuta ukiangalia kale kana kazi labda nitania kwa mfuko what is what you bana sasa Kuna fikiri huyu mtu hata kitengela yote nzima. Kwa nini anachagua yule? Kwa nini anaamua kuja kwako? Anipita kwa ngapi kabla hajafika kwako? Elijah was sent to Bethlehem. So we have seen so many angels that the Lord has sent to us for blessings. There are so many uh, blessings that are by pastors because of not knowing the principle of hallelujah huyu mwanamke it is true she testify kile nilicho nacho ni kidogo na naenda kuchukua kuni nijipikie mimi na kijana yangu okay and elija after hearing that you know sometimes you may misunderstand the meaning of god kama huyu pastor nimemwambia kwamba sina na tena bado anangangana elijah said to her don't be afraid haleluya this morning god is telling us don't be afraid hata kale kamia kama dakika kwa mfuko wako wala hamsini don't be afraid go home and do as you have said but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son is that expression it is only the spirit of god that can direct you to be able to give out what you have for such a person yeah mama nabaki na unga kidogo mafuta kidogo na anajua kesho hata chochote. Ndipo na hakika hata yeye yote hapa mko hapa, hata wengine hamjui kesho kutakuwaje. Umebaki na kitu kidogo, ukiangalia stoki ya chakula chako. Unga ni leo. Afuta ni leo. Hata labda huna mboga. Na hapa mtu wa Mungu amekuja na anakwambia sawa, fanya vile utasema. 
anaanza kupikia mtoto wake. Lakini kabla hujampikia nipatie nafasi kidogo bwana sasa sasa. I was talking to somebody this week. Ana kamweleza the principle ya kupokea protection from God. Bwana sasa sasa. Nimesema nataka tufundishane vitu vya kutusaidia katika maisha yetu. So that once you apply that principle it can help you. Bwana sasa sasa. Hallelujah. All this is All this is giving. Okay? All this is giving. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. There are different levels of giving. But there is one important level that many people ignore. And that is giving to God. All this is giving. But there is a level that protects every other and provides. It provides energy, it provides power, it provides enough source to, to fund the rest. One of the sons. Elijah Kamabia Mama, it has taken a kidogo to Yangu, Nikule, Alafule Ingine, Jitendelezewe na Mtoto wako. That is the principle that he applied. And that woman, kwa sababu wali kogo ni bibi ya mchungai, ama ya nabi, as alifanya hivu exactly. Verse 14. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. One has just happened. Principles of giving. This woman applied that principle of giving when she had nothing, when she had the last meal, when she had something very small in her pocket. Stock yake liko inisha. But what he did, what that woman did, was this level that empowers the second, the third, the fourth, and every other. Once you understand that principle, God provides protection. God provides source that does not end up. Because you are applying the principle that is in the Bible. And that woman, the Bible says that food, that flower, never ended. And we know it was three years and a half. So that woman, everybody was complaining, that woman was eating and drinking and enjoying and making a name. Simply because of the principle of giving. One has to say But for the last meal, never ended. The last coin never ended. One has to Tell me, or give me a testimony of a person who has given out and today is poor. Even you. Maybe you found yourself in a situation whereby you are supposed to give. Tell me if today, as you are standing here, Kwanini Ujabufa? Okay? Maybe you apply that principle in a very small way. But up to today, Bado wewe uko imara, bado wewe una kula, ile chakula iko na rangi kidogo. Haijaisha mpaka siku ya leo. Bwana sasa, in a very small way. You apply the principle of giving. So, let us be led by the spirit of God. Let us be able to understand. Kwa nini sometimes when you don't have that the time you receive people coming to your house. Kwa nini siku ile ambapo huna ama umepungukiwa na pesa? There is a principle. Sometimes God directs, you have been praying, and God directs someone to come to you. And 
because you listen to the voice of God, that person coming to you was meant to give you a blessing. One has to say In most cases, people who have a lot, they don't give. But the people who have gone through stress, who have gone through pain like the best, if you talk to them, they are used to those problems. And you will find it very easily for such people to be able to give. That is the principle I want us to understand. And then we go to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 11 to 17. This is about Elisha with a Shunammite woman. Read for us verse 11 up to 17. Second Kings, Kings chapter 4, verse 11 to 17. One day, when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shunammite. So he called her and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for, for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my people, my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. Gehazi said, She has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, Call her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, You will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to her son, just as Elisha had told her. One has to That is another example of a woman, a generous woman. We are told was a wealthy woman. It's not like the first case where it's a poor woman. Now we are talking about a wealthy woman, a woman who has everything. A woman. After, after receiving Elisha for some time, he felt that this is a man of God because the way he behaves, this one seems to be the man of God. So why, 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 why don't we build a room for him and put a table, put a lamp, so that any time this man of God comes here in this town, he has a place to sleep, a place he can pray, a place he can study the word of God and can do whatever he is supposed to do. The woman convinced the husband and they went ahead and built a house for the man of God. So that action of them building, taking a cost, taking pain to construct for the man of God, made Elisha to ask a question, what can we do for this woman? Hallelujah. When you take that trouble and you make sure that everything works for good, especially for the work of God to be completed or to be accomplished, there is something that you receive in return. There is nothing that goes for free in the house of God. One as the son. If it is washing the church, if it is wiping, arranging, doing every sort of work in church, there is nothing that goes for free. And that is what this woman did. And Elisha said, as a man of God, I want to give back to this woman. And asked, what can we do for you? Do you want us to speak to Ruto? Do you want us to speak to a minister? 
Do you want to speak to the commander or the chief of the area? What do you want me to do for you? Because of the cost and the hassle that woman went through. Building a room, upper room, where a man of God can come and pray, moved Elisha to an extent. He asked, what can we do for you? Hallelujah. When you work for God, when you give yourself to God, God has no other ways but to ask, to ask you, what can I do for this son? What can I do for this daughter? What can I do for this uh, child of mine? What can I do because of the services that he has given to me in the church? So when you touch God through the principle of giving, through the principle of taking hassles so that you can make sure that the church is okay, the man of God is okay, it is an opportunity for you. It is an excuse for God to bless you. God is looking for an excuse. And we see the woman says, I don't want anything, I'm okay. If it is the house, I have. If it is money, I have. I am satisfied. There is nothing else I want from you. But because Jehazi, the assistant of Elisha, you know, when Elisha was praying, he said there, this guy was staying with the woman and he, and he knew what problem they had. They did not have a son. And this woman had tried many years until the man is old now. And when Elisha said, next year a time like this, you will be having a son. He was surprised. He said, I've tried. Mm -hmm. You remember that song of Shusha Nyav? I have tried, and now my man is old. I've not gotten a child. Don't let me have hope, and yet you know it is impossible. But when you give to God, the obstacles are removed from your life. There are things you have been praying for. There are things you have been expecting to happen in your life. There are things you have been failing. Every time you try, you fail. Every time you try, you, you, you don't get it. It is until you start offering your services in the principle that we are trying to learn of giving out to God, to the servants of the Lord, that will make God now to release these blessings. So this Shulamite woman, she was rich, but what she lacked was the son. And the son can, come, can only come from God. And there are many things we are lacking in our lives. There are things we have tried in different ways. We are even going to friends. There are people who are even going to our gathers. There are people who have looked for help from every side. Maybe it is employment. You have been looking for a job for employment. And you have gone through all of them. You have tried your level best. You have gone from one office to another. You have even really used the people that you know, the connection, and things are not working out for you. What you just need to do, just to do like this, you know, my tumor. Serve the Lord. Give whatever you have to the Lord so that He can be able to be touched. Because once you do that principle of giving, he touches God himself. Because he's the one who started it. Giving. Giving. So this woman went through the hustle. Tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can I be done for you? This is something that I like us to know. When you serve the Lord, when you give your time to God, when you give your uh, energy to God, when you give your resources to God, there is something that you are tapping. There is something that you are going to receive. And that is why I'm encouraging young men and women. If you see an opportunity to serve the Lord, give yourself to God. If you see an opportunity of arranging the church, Sweeping, cleaning, and doing everything. Take it as a challenge to you, an opportunity for you.
to be able to receive blessings from God. Don't ever feel that working in a church, sweeping and cleaning the church will be to you. Let me tell you, it is opening the gates of heaven. Once you start serving the Lord through anything that you do in the church, is like a key for opening the doors of your blessings. Probably you are sick and you are looking for healing. And you are going to all type of doctors. And there is no hope. You have been told, for this one, Mama, Hakuna Madawa. Hakuna Okonyachi. Let me tell you, do this principle of the kingdom of God. And you touch God. And He will release what you have been looking for. If it is healing, God is going to heal you. Today I'm dealing with women. <laughs> Let us go to First Samuel, chapter 1. First Samuel, chapter 1. Verses 2 to 5. Is a story about Hannah and Penina, the woman who was not able to conceive, and the co wife Penina had several children. Elikana had two wives, and one wife was able to get so many children, and the second wife, Hannah was unable. God had closed her womb. And there is something that he had to do. She had to do for her womb to be opened. And I want you all to hear very closely how many years this woman has been trying and how many years she has been going to worship the Lord. Verses 2 to 5. That's Samuel. Chapter 1, verse 2 to 5. He had, uh, he had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other Benina. Benina had children, but had, Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phineas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he will give portions of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, and the Lord had clothed her womb. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh. This woman, who had no children, was not left behind. Year after year, Penina came with her children and they sacrificed to the Lord. And Hannah was also coming to sacrifice to the Lord, but she had no children. Even one, Hapua na Mdoto Hata Mgoja, lakini Hapua na Watwa na Banake, Kila Mwaka, year in, year out, Anasafiri, anaelekea kumwabudu Mungu anaenda kanisani anaenda kuomba kila siku anatoa sacrifice anatoa sadaka anatoa kila kitu ambacho kimetangazwa lakini Mungu alikuwa hajasikia maombi watu ambao wamefunga ile tumbo maana tunajua kwamba lile ile mimba haikuweza kupatikana kwa sababu tumbo lake lilikuwa limefungwa na Mungu so despite the fact kwamba alikuwa anaenda kanisani Alikuwa naomba, alikuwa na sacrifice, alikuwa sadaka. The results was just the same. Alikuwa hana mtoto. Verse 11. And she, and she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery, 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 
and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son then i will give him to the lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head hallelujah this woman was praying so she got a revelation what if you bless me with a son what do i do Please. Hallelujah. Alipo pande revelation amekuwa akikuja kila wiki kila siku kila wakati kila mwaka akiomba akipewa sadaka na mwanake akipatiana akifanya nini but now what she did she went into prayers and she prayed like a man woman and she got a revelation akajua kwamba hapa mpaka nipatiane avao ya kupatiana mtoto na akasema alifanya nadhiri mbele ya Mungu na akasema utakaponipatia mtoto kijana mimi nitampatiana katika madhabahu yako haleluya the principle of giving that is what moved god from locking the womb to open it up bana sisi sana aliposema nitampatiana huyu mtoto basi Mungu akasikia maombi yake na mstari wa 17 unasema hivi baada ya Elia uhani mkuu alipona mama aki akiomba sana baada kafika mahali ambapo mdogo anatetemeka na akaona kwamba huyu mama amelewa na Eli kwa sababu hakumuelewa ilibidi hana amueleze kwamba mimi ni mama mwenye uchungu mwingi mimi ni jabezi nimepitia shida nyingi nimepitia soro nimechekwa nimejaribu kila mbinu lakini nimeshindwa na ndio maana nimesimama mbele ya Bwana nikiomba na uchungu mwingi na majibu ya Elia akasema 17 verse 17 20 verse 17 Elia answered go in peace and may the god of israel grant you what you have asked of him verse 18 she said may your servant find favor in your eyes then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast despite the fact that uh, eli had lost favor with god that he still had power to be able to release the blessings and open the doors for this woman and the verse 20 says so in the course of time hana became pregnant and gave birth to a son she named him samuel saying because i asked the lord for him the principle of giving it opened her womb bana sasa sana aliweka nadhiri mbele ya mungu kuna vitu ambavyo vinaweza kuwa vigumu sana katika maisha yako umejaribu bila unavoweza ukajaribu kuenda kwa kila mtu lakini kuna vitu Mungu anataka uweke nadhiri mbele zake ili ataweze kuachilia kuna vitu ambavyo ukiviachilia nadhiri ukifanya kwa nadhiri ya Mungu basi inatimia kwa nasikia sana na hiyo ndio kitu ambacho tunachofundisha asubuhi ya leo the principle of giving Hallelujah. Proverbs 22 verses 9 says this. Generous hands are blessing. For they sh- for they share with the poor. That is Proverbs 22 verses 9. The people who are generous their hands are blessing. Bwana says that Biblia inasema kwamba mikono ile ambayo ni karibu huwa inabarikiwa. Kwa hivyo neno la Mungu linasema unapobarikiwa, unapokuwa generous, uweze kulisha watu ambao ni 
uh, yatima walio na njaa utoe basi mikono yako haitawaikosa baraka na matendo mitume mlango wa 27:35 Patipatiki inasema hivi It is more blessed to give than to receive. Wala sasa. Hallelujah. That is the principle of heaven. Wapendo. Umetoka na maskini. Umetoka na status quo. Umetoka na ile hali unayo. Apply this principle, the principle of heaven. Usijaribu leo na kesho kabosa kujaribu. Jaribu consistently. Kwa sababu if you have understood the principle ambayo tumejifundisha, every time you get an opportunity, there are people who are so generous. Ukisafiri na mtu mwingine ukiwa na kwa matatu, unaenda kutoa tikiti na kuta, anaona ngoja baba. Natoa. Unaenda kukana na mkuta, unataka kununua please kwa sababu they understand the principle of giving and tafuta opportunity ya kuweza kubarikiwa because it is a principle it doesn't matter whether christian you are a muslim you are a don't know god once you apply this principle i am telling you does it matter move heavens because it is a principle attached so we are starting with the first principle of heaven which is giving that will help you to change your life forever does it matter you have or you don't have does it matter your status what you need to do is to apply and this principle moves god yesu mwenye akasema kwamba ni mikono inayotoa iliyobarikiwa zaidi kushinda ile ambayo anapokea have you ever seen a beggar prosper in life wale ambao anaomba kwa naomba kwa na barani. Hadi leo si msema kwamba huyu alikuwa anaomba zamani lakini sasa na try. If you are a beggar and you remain a beggar you will die a beggar. But if you understand the principle you might come from a beggar to supply people with resources because you have understood the principle of giving. You want to become successful? Give it doesn't matter his money it doesn't matter his service it doesn't matter his time even time is a resource if you happen to give it to god there is nothing that god will going to withhold from you to him giving is giving you might give your life to christ jesus it might be time it might be everything that you have everything that you you feel this is good Manake Yesu mwenyewe aliletwa hapa ulimwenguni and is the only son. Na Mungu akasema Nimejaribu kuleta manabii. Nimejaribu kuleta walimu. Nimejaribu kuleta wafalme wangu. Mungu alijaribu sana njia zote za kuweza kuokoa. Lakini akagundua kwamba hiyo haitawezekana. Isipokuwa fanya nini? This was the last and the final that God had to offer for you and me to be able to have a life. Sasa kama Mungu amebadia na Yesu kamkosa kumpokea na kosaje nani? Is it a person is giving or the person is not receiving? So let us apply that principle of giving. This principle of giving can change your life forever in a small way although that's a proper but unasema sasa bibi si tajiri tumeangalia mama ambaye aliopo hapo na mwisho start in a small way participate when you have issues here in the church for example we call tunataka kuweka tunataka kulipa rent be among the first people to say give tunataka kushajia kitu fulani Look for an opportunity for to be blessed. And those people whose hands are generous, they are blessed. 
I'm yet to see a poor man who gives. A person who, is, who has remained poor because of giving. I'm yet to see that. Maybe it will not be a poor. I will not put a Islam. Do you know why? They learn about giving. Employers will be. Do you know what Why do they become employers? Because of giving. Giving. Sadaka. You will find a Muslim always watch an ashida. And a chupu and ubiangu, 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 and a pupa. Now, a pupa and a giwa. What about gender species? Men are blessed with money. Do you know why men have money? It's the nature of a man to give. Man of men for care in a poor woman, like in put four for man of men race. Now, now put a man of men and a very cure. There's a man of men, the very cure son, for some gunning. The principle of giving. Okay? Sister, you're a man, and I don't have a man who's always hard. Like a man, it is his nature to give, to provide for his family, for whatever it is. I'm glad you're getting me on a job, but I'm not getting a job. Like a that principle of giving, to not put a bomb their hands are blessed. So, can we teach ourselves how to give to God? How to give ourselves to God? How to give time to God? How to sacrifice? Like coming here in the church in the evening on Saturdays, come and look here. Thank you very much, Freddy, for, for, for having time. You know, yesterday, I knew, as for me, I knew it was going to be difficult because I was working out with something which I'm going to show it later. And I knew if we fail not to have time, then this church will be that. But when I came here at around 1, 7 in the night, she had already finished. God bless you. That's how the step of giving to God. It will not go unnoticed. Hallelujah. So let us look for opportunities in the church. It's tough to be mean as a fan of inside. Especially the Jana Pata Boy Kani. When the Jana. At the Isha Saturday, at the Nesta. Look for an opportunity. Just an excuse. Is there anything that we charge? That is a service. That is giving your time. Giving your very precious time. You never want to come to so much. You never want to be late. But you say let me go for it tomorrow. Oh my God! Come and speak up. Hallelujah. You know that power that you have. May Lord bless all your moves. That is the first principle. We are going to learn another principle next week. The second principle. That is the matter of the family. And once we apply those principles, na taka kumisha ma kushibuda hapa kwa kanisa ya kwamba ni kwa apply hii principle imenisaidia mahali. Na Mungu awabariki na awapatie neema kwa nafsi yake.